But I want to talk to you a little bit about all stars here in the city. You know, for a long time, we had iconic figures that reigned over our sports crazy city. I grew up idolizing Walter Payton and Michael Jordan. Walter Payton and Michael Jordan, I had those two posters on my wall as a kid because Walter Payton, he was the Bears for a long time until they won the Super Bowl in 1985. He was the offense. He would kick the the football if you asked him to. Uh, He could run the ball. He could be able to catch it. I mean, he was just one of the all-time greats. My favorite running back growing up was Walter Payton. Michael Jordan, I think that speaks for itself, right? I mean, we know what Michael Jordan has done, not only for the city, but making basketball a global game. Larry Bird and Magic Johnson was able to set the sport on fire, but not globally like Michael Jordan did. And so we know what Jordan has brought to the table. We still talk about him today in 2022. And he's the owner of the Charlotte Hornets. And we still talk about Jordan and everything that he did and everything he brought to the Chicago Bulls organization. Dennis Savard was my guy growing up as far as listening to Blackhawks hockey growing up as a kid. Savard was my favorite player growing up for the Blackhawks. And Andre Dawson with the Chicago Cubs coming to the Cubs after all those years on the AstroTurf playing for the Montreal Expos. He comes to the Cubs and he says, and they say, well, okay, Andre, how much do you want to make? And he's like, okay, well, here's a blank check. Just You, you just fill out the number and I'll play for the Cubs. $500,000 he played for the Cubs in 1987 and was the MVP. Bo Jackson actually played in Chicago, which is amazing. Bo Jackson, we talk about Otani being outstanding, one of one. Bo Jackson, one of the first that we ever seen to be able to play football and baseball. He was in a White Sox uniform. Crazy, right? Some very good players and some bigger than life itself superstars have played in this city. You know, in today's world, we have so many iconic players that we watch each year. Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers. And they've been on the top of the heap for a long time in football. Steph Curry showed us something that we've never seen before shooting the basketball from the moon and winning championships and changing the way the game is played today. In baseball last night, we saw Otani, as I mentioned, one of one, pitching and hitting for the Angels. Incredible feat in a specialized sports world in 2022. Uh, And you and I have watched sports for a long time. And I know that you and I know a star when we see one. It's not about whether or not you own the jersey of your favorite player or not, or you just have a rooting interest of your team. Look, even players and teams that you and I don't like, we know the stars when we see them. As a matter of fact, when we go to the venues, whether it's Wrigley or Guaranteed Rate or going to the United Center, listen, we are usually booing the best of the best. It's to give them respect, but also to try to rattle them, hoping that they won't hurt our favorite team. I mean, it's just part of fandom, right? You and I have done this for a long time. I know I've done it for a long time as a fan, too. You stand up and you boo the best. You're giving them their props, but at the same time, you don't want them to hurt our favorite team. And so when I look at this city, and I was reading a piece from Steve Greenberg from the Sun-Times, suntimes.com, and Greenberg was just going through Chicago sports and just saying that there isn't a lot to root for anymore, how July has not been great because – the White Sox have been teeter-tottering around 500, and now they're a 500 ball club. Cubs are out of it. We don't know what the uh, the Bears will look like. Exactly how bad will it be? Doctor, tell me how bad is it, right, when we come to this Bears team? The Blackhawks going backwards as an organization. So when you take a look at the major sports that we cover here on Cap and J. Hood every morning, we know that we are looking at um, several rebuilds. And we're looking at a team that might be on the precipice and the Bulls, and then we'll see what the White Sox do. But in our city, do you notice the amount of stars are dwindling across the board? I just talked about the Blackhawks, and there was a topic that Bleck and I had uh, yesterday morning talking about Eddie Olchek and how Eddie will now be the voice of the Seattle Kraken and not be part of the Blackhawks organization after 16 years in the booth. And it's, it's sad because if nothing else, if the Hawks were going to be bad, at least it was going to be entertainment from a broadcasting standpoint, with Pat Foley and Eddie Olchek. And now Pat's gone, and Eddie's gone too. And then what do you have left? So let's kind of review what we have here in the city. You know the sports landscape like I do. But when it comes to the White Sox, Tim Anderson is it. Jose Abreu, to me, is the Paul Konerko of this generation as far as leadership. doesn't matter whether or not he has 
um, whether he speaks perfect English or not. That doesn't matter. I, I know I, I find it interesting that I read this from time to time for those that actually cover the sport and they talk about, well, Jose Abreu doesn't have the per- most perfect English, so he can't lead. That's not true. That's not true. Uh, um, you can lead by example or what you do in the field. And also, you know, there is the opportunity to communicate with teammates, even if the English isn't perfect. That doesn't matter. What do you do on the field? What do you do in the clubhouse that, that you can lead? Jose Abreu is a leader of this team. I'm glad that he signed and re-signed with the White Sox because I'd love for him to be able to capture a championship uh, with this team. Tim Anderson is that guy, too, the guy that says, I'm changing the game. I feel like I have to be a leader in the sport as one of the few African-Americans in baseball. We're at less than 7% now when it comes to African-Americans in baseball. So Tim needs to leave this in this sport. For the Cubs, Wilson Contreras. I've told Cap for a while now that I want what's best for Wilson Contreras, and that's to be traded to a contending team. It was great for him to represent the Cubs in the All-Star game, but this Cubs team is not ready to compete yet. And it looks like there won't be a resigning or trying to redo his contract anytime soon. But at this point in time, as we talk about this today on July 20th, it is true that Wilson Contreras is the leader and the emerging leader of this team post Bryant and Rizzo and Lester and players that ilk during the championship era. We talked about the Blackhawks, and at some point, I'm sure we'll have breaking news here at ESPN 1000 that says that Tame to either Taves or Kane will be traded and going someplace else. These two players have really been able to help this Blackhawks team in a great way, as you well know. Three Stanley Cup championships, and Taves and Kane don't need to be around for a rebuild. And so they deserve better than what they have over there on the west side as well. And then for the Bulls, it's Zach Levine and dot, 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 who? Is that DeMar DeRozan? I know it's Zach Levine for the long haul because he just signed a long-term deal. And for the Sky, it's Candace Parker, one of the best to ever do it. And she's not slowing down anytime soon, looks like. Candace Parker is one of the goats of the sport. So when we go through these names of Candace Parker and Zach Levine and or DeRozan or Taves and Kane right now or Wilson Contreras or Tim Anderson and Jose Abreu, I want you to tell me something. And let's open the phone lines on this. Shay, 312-332-ESPN, 332-3776 is our phone number. I want you to tell me two things here in our next half hour. I'm interested in this conversation of who was the star that represented Chicago sports for you the most growing up and who represents Chicago sports in 2022, the all-star in Chicago. Because I'm here to tell you that for me, out of the list I gave you is Tim Anderson. And you say, well, how could that be? I said, "Did did you hear the list I gave? Tim Anderson is a guy that has put himself out there. Some baseball players won't do this, but he's put himself out there and says, we have to change the game, and I'm here to change the game. And I like that as a slogan, but also someone who's walking it and talking it. I like that from Tim. And I see a guy here that we haven't even seen his best baseball as of yet. Is he a perfect baseball player? No. But he was an all-star, and he represented the city. Wilson Contreras is not going to be here probably, more than likely by the deadline. But when it comes to Tim Anderson, there's a good possibility that he's going to be here for the long haul with this White Sox team. Again, we're bereft of the quality stars in the city for now because you have two or three rebuilds happening all at the same time. But you tell me, the the star that represents the city the most, the all-star that represents Chicago the most in 2022, who was it for you when you were a kid? And who is it now? I'd love to hear the comparison. So let's open the phone line, Shay. 312-332-ESPN is our phone number. The Chicago star that could take over the city. Who is it now? We'll get your phone calls on that and more as we move forward here on Capitol. 